speaker is is probably new to some of you, very familiar to a lot of you. Matt has been a, a dear friend of First Fridays um, and has been a great supporter. He uh, was appointed uh, by the president to serve the Secretary of Defense all the way back in 2001. And you have served how many uh, administrations? Three. Three. And, and currently still works for uh, Vice President Pence. And uh, I can't tell you all of his duties. He said he would have to kill me if I did. Uh, but uh, he has been to well over 100 different countries uh, through the, the uh, Secretary of Defense working with them and has received amazing and outstanding awards. And you, I'm sure most of you have read that when you saw our invite. Uh, but I think Matt's best quality of all the things that he has done uh, throughout his, his, his extinguished career, wonderful career, is he is a great, great friend. Extinguished, yeah, I just extinguished. <laughs> 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 uh, wow. I've been waiting for somebody to do that. <laughs> it's amazing what happens when you lose a letter. Um, but uh, he, is a, he is a wonderful friend and a, a, a great man, a uh, wonderful father to his kids. And just give Matt a great warm welcome to First Fridays. Some of whom who have died um, for our rights, for our constitution, for our beliefs. That's uh, no, no better sacrifice. And so I realize that all of you, um, when you signed up, when you put on the uniform, you essentially were giving your life to your country. And um, I never had that privilege. I, um, I grew up in a, in a family of veterans. Um, I was very close to my great grandfather, who was a World War I veteran, <clears throat> was raised by two grandfathers that were second uh, World War veterans, and uh, lots of uncles and cousins that served. <clears throat> I'm, I grew up a diabetic, so I couldn't wear the uniform, but I decided to serve in, a, in a, I guess, a different capacity. So if I say something that's a little off, I'm going to blame it on low blood sugar. Just so <laughs> <nobody knows. clears throat> um, So let me, I guess, start by telling you a little bit about me and then we'll move into the, the topic of leadership. I'm a Southern Indiana native. Um, you can probably tell by some of the words that I use, there's a little bit of a drawl. Um, my grandmother was from Eastern Kentucky. Uh, she died a couple of years ago and I really never understood what she was saying at all. So <laughs> I picked up a little bit of that. But um, Southern Indiana native, went to college in Indiana, went to graduate school in Oklahoma, and at that point in time, I um, decided that I wanted to move to Washington and was offered a job in the mayor's office. So back when Anthony Williams, not Marion Barry, Anthony, Anthony Williams was mayor, um, I was offered a job in his administration and uh, went to work for him for about a year, <clears throat> working on a, um, a neighborhood initiative. It was an economic development initiative, which I fully believed in. It was taking uh, some of the assets that were in some of the um, less privileged neighborhoods in Washington and trying to take those local assets and do something with them, uh, spawn economic development. So it was a, it was a great first job in, in government. From there, I went to, I decided it was time I better start paying off some of those graduate school loans. So I um, took a corporate job at US Airways. US Airways was headquartered in Arlington, Virginia at the time. Um, I was given a position, I was at, by that point in time I had my MBA and so I, I was um, probably elevated a little bit above where I should have been, but I was given a, a management job 
where I managed um, some big corporate accounts. So I had the National Football League and I had the Miss America pageant. Um, <laughs> as well as all the international accounts. So, you know, here I am, new to the job. By the way, the lady that had the job before me had to take a sabbatical because she was mentally overwhelmed. And I knew this, I knew this gal. She's a very capable, very um, well-educated uh, individual. So I was, pretty, I was pretty scared when I uh, stepped into that job. I used to ride up the elevator every day. The gentleman who ran US Airways was a gentleman by the name of Stephen Wolf. And Mr. Wolf had a, he was a, he was a turnaround specialist and had a very uh, good reputation in the airline industry. He was about six feet, 11 inches tall, uh, tortoise rim glasses, very distinguished looking gentleman. And so every day I would ride up the elevator with him and I, I thought, you know, you don't know me, but I know you and if I screw up these accounts, you're gonna know me. So, um, so I did my best to, uh, to you know, uh, help US Airways as, as much as I could, their bottom line and, and I guess appropriately managing some of these corporate accounts. But so about two years into my job, at US Airways, I had a friend who actually was from Southern Indiana as well, um, who had done very well. He, he was a Georgetown graduate. Um, he was a 